everyone and welcome back to All About Steph 1 with me Steph and today's video I've been waiting for this one I've been waiting for two weeks since Formula E went to Monaco and now that Formula 1 has been to Monaco this video is born we have never been able to directly compare Formula E and Formula 1 because we've never raced on the same circuit but all that changed when it was announced that Formula E would be racing on the full Monaco Grand Prix circuit for this season and my oh my was that a brilliant decision because we got an absolutely fantastic race from Formula E. Everyone was buzzing about it and the overtaking, the excitement, it was all unreal and created a fantastic race weekend. But on the other hand, on the other side of the spectrum, it wasn't such an easy story for Formula 1. So in this video, we will be comparing the Monaco e Prix with the Monaco Grand Prix and seeing what the best differences and similarities are between Formula 1 and Formula E. Before we get into it, let it be known that I am both a Formula E fan and a Formula 1 fan. I love both of the series, they are both incredible in their own right, and this does not determine, this one weekend that they've shared, doesn't really determine how well either of the series are doing. It is just the one baseline comparison we have between both of the series. And on that note, let's just get straight into it by talking about qualifying because both of the qualifying sessions were very, very similar in terms of how exciting they were. And I think that that is very indicative of Monaco as well. The qualifying is just always exceptional because it is so tight around there and you see the drivers on the absolute limit. Qualifying around Monaco is an incredible experience for whatever series. With the qualifying structures, they are a little bit different because Formula 1 has the Q1, Q2, Q3 setup where we lose five drivers in Q1 and five drivers in Q2 and then the top 10 drivers battle it out for the top 10 points starting positions on the grid. But it's slightly different for Formula E where we have group qualifying which consists of the top six in the championship going out in the first group set of time then we have the next six in the championship then we have the next six of the championship and the next six of the championship but because of track evolution it means that the last six in the championship have the best chance of setting the quickest time and therefore making it into the super pole shootout which is the top six fastest drivers from the group qualifying sessions and they all fight it out to see who will be on pole position so the qualifying session is very different for both of the races with formula e there was just six hundredths of a second between the top four for drivers whereas with formula one we had that red flag towards the end of qualifying so we don't know how close the drivers would have been but it was around about three tenths of a second that was between the top four drivers in formula one qualifying but qualifying is an absolute spectacle in its own right and i think both of the sessions were absolutely incredible to watch but let's get on to talking about the actual race and the race comparisons now we know that monaco is a tight circuit it's not very forgiving of mistakes and overtaking is fairly difficult that is something that has been drilled into me personally as a Formula One fan for years. But what we saw in comparison with Formula E and Formula One was that overtaking is possible. Something to note in terms of overtaking is that the car sizes have massive impact on how easy it is to overtake around Monaco because the bigger your car is, the more difficult it obviously is to overtake because the car, the cars are taking up more space on the track. Formula E cars are around 5.2 meters long and 1.8 meters wide, whereas Formula One cars are around 5.7 meters long and two meters wide. So we can see here that the Formula One cars are a little bit bigger and therefore it does make it a little bit more difficult to overtake in terms of Formula One. On the subject of talking about cars, Formula One cars are definitely more prone to damage than Formula E cars. So the chassis of the Gen 2 cars are built really robustly so that even a little bit of contact won't put you out of the race. Whereas it's not the same for Formula One, we saw in Brazil 2019 the tiniest bit of contact between the two Ferraris resulted in them both DNFing and that's not something we really experience in Formula E so it's definitely a lot easier to get the overtakes done. However, with Formula E and throughout the Monaco e Prix, there were nearly 150 different changes in position, 28 of which just occurred between the top six drivers. So that demonstrates that overtaking is more than possible and it's definitely very prevalent within Formula E. Now in comparison, Formula One cannot compete on the overtaking front because there just simply weren't any. All of the overtakes that we actually saw happening were on the first opening lap. And if they weren't on the opening lap, they were as a result of pit stop or strategy changes. And therefore they weren't actual on-track overtakes. They were from the pit lane or from somebody else diving into the pit lane and dropping down positions. There was a tiny, tiny bit of close wheel-to-wheel -wheel action up Beau Rivage. And that was with Sebastian Vettel and Pierre Gasly 
Gasly, but that was as Sebastian Vettel was exiting the pit lane. So I don't know if you can count that as an overtake because he was technically ahead. So that just shows how little racing we actually had and how little wheel-to-wheel -wheel action we had throughout Monaco, which isn't a surprise because we know that it is very difficult to overtake around Monaco. And that leads me on to my next point, which is all about mentality. We know that the Formula 1 cars are bigger than the Formula E cars, but why were there so many more overtakes within Formula E than there were in Formula 1? Well, I think a lot of it is down to the mentality that the Formula 1 drivers had. I kept hearing all weekend it's impossible to overtake around Monaco, which is strictly not true because overtaking is possible. You just have to be able to go for the risk and you have to be close enough to make it stick. Obviously, I myself am not a Formula One driver and therefore I'm not really in a position to be criticizing the driver's choices, but all of the drivers played the Monaco Grand Prix extremely safe. There were no risky moves and there were no massive overtake attempts. So even thinking back to Monaco Grand Prix in 2019, when Max Verstappen was putting pressure on Lewis Hamilton and tried to make some overtakes stick, even though it didn't work, at least he was having a go at it, while we didn't really see that happening throughout the entirety of the Grand Prix this year. In comparison, I feel like Formula E is much more unpredictable and therefore the drivers are much more willing to go for the risky moves. Part of it is because they know if they go for the risky move and it doesn't necessarily pay off and they have contact, it won't put them out of the race because the chassis is so robust. But part of it is also because Formula E is anyone's game, whereas with Formula One, there are very clearly the top drivers, the midfield drivers, and the guys who are at the back right now. So it is definitely more difficult to contemplate taking that risk in Formula One, but nobody took a risk throughout the entirety of the race, and it was all very plain sailing. Now, I also want to talk about DRS and attack mode in comparison with each other because they are both very similar in the fact that they are artificial ways of closing up the gaps between the drivers and the races. But attack mode is almost like a pit stop in Formula 1 because it is what dictates the strategy game in Formula E. Now, attack mode was actually a lot more useful around Monaco because you get an extra 25 kilowatts of energy to use for four minutes, I believe. And in comparison to DRS, where you get about 10 kilometers per hour extra speed, it just, they don't really compare. Uh, DRS just isn't really that effective around Monaco and does not really help to make overtaking any easier. While we're on the subject of attack mode and strategy, Formula One's version of strategy is pit stops and Monaco is usually a one-stop race due to low tyre degradation so it doesn't really leave much room for experimentation and playing around with strategy. This weekend we did see a few different strategies from drivers including Yuki Tsunoda and Lance Stroll but with Formula E there are definitely a lot more ways that you can play out your attack mode therefore creating differing strategy to your rivals and promoting more exciting racing. Another thing to know as well is that Formula E race on street circuits all the time. That is their forte, that is their thing, they race on street circuits. Whereas with Formula One, they race on street circuits, they race on permanent circuits, they race on half street circuits, half permanent circuits. Formula One very much has its hands in all the pies. So the cars aren't suited to be on street circuits all the time and the drivers aren't used to being on street circuits all the time like the Formula E drivers are. So that is an important thing to remember that the Formula E drivers just have a lot more experience on the tight twisty circuits of the street. They have a lot more experience in terms of being close to the other drivers on these street circuits and this is not something that the Formula One drivers necessarily do all the time so it's more unknown to them. So regardless of attack mode and regardless of whether the cars were bigger or smaller, the overtaking was just there for Formula E around Monaco. That being said, Formula One is still the pinnacle of motorsport. There are incredible drivers in this category and I think the fact that no one crashed out and no one made mistakes throughout the whole Monaco Grand Prix is definitely a testament to how good the drivers are. Honestly, comparing the Monaco E Prix and the Monaco Grand Prix, Formula E was leaps and bounds ahead of Formula One in terms of race quality and entertainment. This is not me saying that Formula E is better than Formula One. That's not something that we can say based on a weekend in which it played much more to the strengths of Formula E than it did to Formula One. On their own, both of the series are incredible. They are fantastic and they are exciting racing series, but both of them can learn from each other as well. We will never be able to make direct comparison between Formula E and Formula One because they are both so different. They stand for different things and they represent different things. I mean, Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsport, whereas Formula E is that up and coming future of motorsport. So they are very, very different, but also very similar. 
Who knows if we'll be able to compare them in the future? Potentially, we might see Formula E on a racetrack that Formula One has raced at. We did see Formula E racing on a real track for the first time when they went to Valencia last month, but Formula One has never raced the track that Formula E raced, so therefore we still can't make direct comparisons. My point is they are both incredible series on their own merit and while Formula E might have come out on top in terms of how great Monaco was, it might not come out on top if we were to race at another circuit. What we should definitely do is appreciate both of the series in their own rights because they both have a lot of redeeming qualities and if you haven't already checked Formula E out, you should definitely do so if you are watching me because you like my Formula 1 content. Let me know in the comments down below whether you preferred the e Prix or the Grand Prix and don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe down below if you have not already. Come join the little All About Steph 1 family. But thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!